Greetings YouTube, this is Keith in Modesto bringing you another episode of my Let's Play series uh, using Direwolf 20's mod pack. Um, I I finished uh, mining all the obsidian that was here. Uh, I wrote actually wrote a program to do that for me, so I want to show you that now. I thought it was pretty cool after I finally finished it. I think I mentioned that I I uh, I might work on something like that at the end of my last episode. So, so I did. So here it is. Um, if I open up, let's see. I do a list, and I'll see. I've got several programs. The one that I finished making is called Mine Ob for Mine Obsidian. I might change that name. Really? Okay. So, whoops. So I want to do Edit Mine Ob. Okay. So here it is. The first couple of lines are uh, just explaining, uh, or just some comments explaining what the program does. So if I look at it later, I will remember. I have it set up so that um, you give it uh, one or two arguments. If you give it one, it will. Um, what it does is it mines just a single layer, uh, and you specify the dimensions of the layer that you want to uh, you want to mine. That way, you can lay it on top of. You can set it right on top of some um, obsidian and tell it how much of it to mine and it will mine it. Usually the obsidian is only going to be in one layer because uh, if you take, if, if you have a pool of lava and you pour some water over it, then the top layer of lava that the water touches, that the water flows upon, is going to turn into obsidian. Into obsidian. <clears throat> so you really only want to mine that one layer. So that's what this program is designed to do. So you type in mine OB and if you type in just one number like two, then it'll mine a two by two square uh, layer of obsidian. And if you put in, uh, you know, four, it'll be a four by four layer. If you put in two space three, it'll do a two by three uh, rectangle where um, two will be the number of uh, rows and three will be the number of columns. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you that in a little while. So. Um, That'll make, if that doesn't make sense now, it should later. Anyway, so the very first thing the program does after these comments is uh, local trgs equals bracket dot 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 bracket. That is, that is bringing in um, the, any arguments you give when you invoke the program. And, and I, I figured this part right here out by looking at a program that came with uh, the mod. So uh, then we uh, initialize some variables and x and y. X is the number of um, rows and y is the number of columns and then I check how many arguments were actually passed one or two if it was one then it's going to be a square so I said x x is equal to that argument uh, two number makes the argument into a number uh, because you know you could have pressed any keyboard any key on the keyboard it doesn't know uh, and then we set y to x so, since it's a square otherwise if it was two arguments then uh, x is going to be the first argument and y is going to be the second argument. Then I, I uh, t equals turtle. Uh, there's a turtle API which you invoke by um, by by doing turtle dot and whatever command. But it's you know if you do if you're going to do that a lot, I find it really annoying to have to write turtle dot all the time. So I set t equals to turtle, so I can just write t dot and then the and then the whatever function I'm invoking from the API. So, so t equals turtle is just a it's just a shortcut to make programming easier. Then I set uh, I have this turn left as a toggle to let me know whether I'm at some point I'm going to be turning left or turning right. And and um, uh, see the turtle is going to the turtle is going to go up a column, then turn and come back down a column then up a column and then down a column, which means that it first it's turning left, then it's turning right, then it's turning left, and then it's turning right. So you need to keep track of that. That's what that's for. And then look, let's see, evil, even columns equals true if, uh, if the number of columns that you're asking it to mine is true. Otherwise, it's going to be false. And that is used so that I can get the turtle back to the starting location when it's finished mining the layer. Then I made up a function, which is just to uh, make it go forward. I have it detect whether there's a block in front of it, and if there is, it's going to dig, you know, to get rid of it, and then try again and try again. That way, if gravel is falling, it can get rid of all the gravel or sand. It can get rid of all the gravel or sand. 
that might be in front of it. That usually it shouldn't. There shouldn't usually be something in front of it, but if there is, that'll take care of that. Um, then I got two for loops. The outer for loop where, that is uh, for j equals one y do that outer for loop takes care of the columns, and, or yeah, and the inner for loop takes care of the the rows. So um, so when you're going down when you're going down a column, you're actually counting the number of rows. That's the inner loop. And then you want to go over, and each time you finish a column, you got to go over one to the next column. That's done by counting the number of columns, and that is taken care of by the outer for loop that uses the J uh, counter. I guess that's what you call that. Anyway, then we, so, um, so, so first, first you go into the outer loop. When you go into the outer, outer loop, you start doing an inner loop that, that goes down the column and actually digs the obsidian mines the layer underneath it. it. What it does is it you sit it on top of the layer you want to mine, the obsidian, and then it it goes along and digs underneath it and um, collects the obsidian that it dug from underneath it. And uh, so that's what this for loop is doing. And then and then after that we check whether whether or not we're going to be turning left or turning right. And depending on which one should be done, it it executes some commands. To uh, to get in the right position, and then it, and then um, what is it? oh, and then and then it ends and ends. Okay, so it ended the inner loop, and then it ends the outer loop. So that after after going through all that, it should have mined all the obsidian in every in the whole uh, in the whole square or rectangle that you def that you uh, in def defined when you invoked the program. Then it checks. After that's done, it should be at the you know the last. It should be hovering over the last piece of obsidian that it just mined, or whatever. Actually, it'll mind whatever is whatever's underneath it when it's doing this, whether it's obsidian or whatever, um, because the obsidian you're mining might not be an exact, you know, square or rectangle. Uh, there could be some overlap with something else. Um, anyway, so after it's done with that, it'll be over the last. It'll be hovering over the last position where it mined something, and we need to check whether. Uh, Depending on whether it's an even number of columns or an odd number of columns, it's going to be in a different sort of position. And I, and I can show an example of that. Um, so, so this part right here checks that, whether even columns is true or false. It, uh, it's checking what position it's going to be in. And depending on which one it is, it executes these commands, which, which uh, cause it to end up in the same position it was when it first started. And then it's over. So there you go. Uh, one thing I didn't I didn't put in the square mark program, which I thought of later, is if it were to be digging a, a gravel that was falling in front of it at some point, it, it the gravel might drop some um, some flint, and which means I should have it try to pick that up if there is any, uh, but I didn't. It won't it won't hurt anything if it doesn't, but but I, I might add that I might add that in later. Um, Anyway, so there's that. So, in order to show you how this works, I'm going to bring this turtle over here because there's another big pool of lava. I'm actually not going to mine, you know, I'm not going to turn this all into obsidian and mine it because uh, I don't need that much obsidian, at least not right now. But I can um, retrieve the lava, so to speak, and use it as fuel in geothermal generators or uh, magmatic engines, magmatic engines, I should say, which is another which is another device that can use uh, lava to uh, generate power. Anyway, so I need to bring this turtle over here, and the way I'm first, I'm just gonna I'm gonna move the turtle manually. I gotta get out of this program. Okay, so I need to um, have it turn uh, left twice, so it's turned around, and then I need it to go up to. I think. Okay. And then I'm going to go forward a bunch. Go forward. We'll try eight. Okay. Now, let's see. I think I will, I think I'll have it turn left here. And then go forward three. And then turn right. And then I guess I need it to go up. Go up. All right, now, one, two, three, four. I guess four would work. Go forward four. 
Yes, okay, I'm gonna move this. Uh, put it right there. Okay, now, instead of uh, trying to, you know, navigate it all through here, I'm just gonna have it mine its way through this wall, because I, I kind of need, uh, it'd be better if I was over there a little more anyway. Um, there's actually a program already on the, on, the, on the turtle, which comes with the mod that'll do this for me, called Tunnel. And um, to use tunnel, you, you type in tunnel, space, and then the length of the tunnel you want it to mine for you. Uh, so I want it to do, let's this, this just do four. I know that's not enough, but I want, so it's gonna mine a tunnel that's uh, three wide and two high. Oh, there's a little bit of four. I'm gonna have to get that for myself. When you're down low, you want to put up torches for light so monsters don't spawn. There are monsters around here, but they're behind the walls and other spaces, so they don't matter. Okay, let's tunnel four more. Redstone. All right, we're getting close. Uh oh, that's not too good. I might have to do a little bit of work here. Oh. Okay, I gotta kill that. That's a creeper. I got my arrows now, so my bow and arrow, so I can I can take him out without getting too close. Oh, and there's a zombie. Actually, we'll just use. Okay, I want to. Uh... some stone here down so I won't fall in the lava. Okay, looks like I'm gonna have to do a little bit of... Okay. Uh, well, I guess I'll just do this on camera. I'm, I gotta, uh, whoops. <sighs> I hate that. Um, oh, here we go. Yikes. I didn't f run fast enough. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go off camera and, and uh, clean this area up here so uh, so I can present this the way I want to. Anyway, I'll be right back. All right, I am back now. I had to come up here and put up some torches and place all this uh, cobblestone here to to prevent any monsters that are spawning back there from getting over here. Now, it's still possible for monsters to spawn over there, so I have to watch out. And uh, a little while ago, a, ske a skeleton spawned over there. I had to shoot him with my my uh, bow till he fell into the lava. But anyway, so here we are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour some water onto, um, onto this lava, and it'll turn into obsidian, the top layer, as far as the, uh, the water will go anyway. So I'm going to pour the water right there. Okay, I'm going to pick it back up. There we go. So I got a nice big section there of obsidian. Now, I guess what I would want to do, it would be easier if I just... Actually, let me put more water right here. There we go. Now, uh, I want to put some... Uh, make sure this turtle has plenty of fuel, so I'm going to put a bucket of lava in here and type in refuel, and it's going to take all that lava. It leaves me the bucket, which is really nice. 
and tells me it's got 1766 worth of fuel, which is more than enough. Okay, so first I'm gonna tell the turtle to go down. Uh, go down, one. Okay, so now it's sitting right on top of uh, the obsidian. And I'm gonna go, let's see, we go one, two. So we count where he is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's go eight. Uh, actually, let's not do that. Let's go um, one, two, one, two, three, four. Mm, yeah, why not? We'll just do eight. Uh, eight and four. So we do uh, mine, OB, eight, four, and press enter. See, now he's going along. He's uh, digging up the obsidian that's underneath it. Now he's gonna turn and come back, dig up that gravel. Now he's, when something's in front of him, he digs that out. Uh, he's able to dig the lava. I didn't know it would do that, but he won't keep it. He, he can't store lava without a without something to put it in. So this should be the last row, or the last column. So he's going to turn and come back and end up right where he started. There we go. Now I open him up and see that I got 21 obsidian plus some cobblestone and gravel. Um, now, it looks like when he when he was over lava, it kind of mined it, but it, he didn't get to keep it. Uh, there, is a way, there is a way for him to get the lava, but I haven't set that up. Anyway, so there you go. Uh, now, I think I will pour some more water and do this again. And only have him do um, have him do three columns, so you can see what happens then. Now uh, you just saw some of the lava turned into cobblestone, and some of it turned into into um, obsidian. That's because only source blocks, lava source blocks, can turn into obsidian. If it's flowing lava, it turns into cobblestone. So what I, first I want to do is have it um, dig down. Right, I had a, I wrote a little program that would do that and have it. Let, actually, let's, let's get rid of that flowing lava. It wouldn't hurt him, but I don't want to bother with that. Uh, hmm. Let's go back one. Go back. Dig down. Okay. I don't... Let's see. Actually, if I put a piece of cobblestone right there, and... Another one. I don't want to fall in there. Right there. And right there. There we go. Okay. Now we should be able to put a piece of cobblestone right there. There we go. Go forward two. Okay, go down one. Yes, okay, so, let me let, put another torch right here. Now, what I'm going to do is have him mine some more, and let's see how far we want to go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's go out seven. And, but we only, we want to do three, we want to do an odd number of columns. So, mine, O, B, did I say seven? Three. So, okay, so now he's mining. He's getting a little more cobblestone. He's coming back down, second column. I gotta make sure I don't get too close there. I don't wanna fall into the lava. Now he's gonna go back up, the third column. And that's the last column. He's gonna turn around and come back. See, that's where you have to figure out whether it was an even number of columns or an odd number of columns. Because when it was even, he ended, he ended up here and, had to, and just came back. And then it's an odd number of columns, he's gonna end up up there somewhere. So he's gotta come back down a column as and then over. That's why I had to keep track of that. So there you go. Um, and I'm just gonna leave him there because, well, I can always come back here and mine up more obsidian if I want to. I mean, there's some more here. The other reason is if, if I were to, well, I can move him around manually like I, in the same way I moved him from, you know, over there to over here. The other thing I can do is take my pickaxe and, uh, you know, and pick him up by breaking him. He, it doesn't destroy him, but it will, 
it'll pick them up. I mean, it'll turn into a little block that I can pick up and put in my inventory and carry around with me. The problem with that is that any programs you programmed onto him and all the fuel that he had will all be lost. There's a way around that, and that is my next the next step I will be taking in my next video. I'm going to create a hard drive and a floppy disk so I can copy any programs I make over to the floppy and then carry around the turtle with me and move it to other spots. Okay, so that's it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.